We are live on Popcorn Planet, but this is the main event, the main topic of today's show, and we're live every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going to start pivoting to some other news stories uh, that you guys uh, help suggest, throw in, that I want to talk about. Uh, so lots more coming on this channel. But as we wind down the Brian Laundry case, which, guys, I hate to admit it, it's starting to wind down. As we find, find out the answers to this final chapter of what happened, how did they bumble this so much? Uh, the Northport police are out there doing damage control. And uh, Josh Taylor, who I've not been too kind on, I think Josh Taylor is a buffoon who bumbled a lot of stuff. Granted, he's human. We're all human. We all make mistakes. But I do think he made a lot of mistakes. He is finally admitting, well, the Northport police is finally admitting to mistakes in the Brian Laundry investigation. So I I'm glad to hear that. Finally, it would have been nice for them to acknowledge that sooner because it would have helped, helped us in ways. But they're actually saying, you know what? It, it wouldn't have helped at all because, uh, you know, it's just a lack of cooperation. And uh, the quote I think he said is he, he was probably a very good possibility he was dead anyway. So who cares? Yeah, this is literally what he said. Very good possibility that he was dead when we mistook his mom for him. <sighs> all right, let's go through this quote. All right, so here this is uh, through uh, Wink. Wink News. They have this report. Let's, wa let's watch it together. Okay. Thanks. Investigators admit to making mistakes in the Brian Laundry case. In that Wink News exclusive today from the Northport Police. And Wink News reporter Erica Jackson Wink. joins us live from Northport. Erica, the Northport Police Department thought that they had a close eye on Brian before he was reported missing. Oh, but they did. Nicole, Northport PD had surveillance set up around the laundry home, but that strategy failed. The people responsible for watching the laundry house saw Brian leave in his silver Mustang, that car parked in the driveway, and then they thought they saw him come back a few days later. But no, they mixed up Brian and his mom. <laughs> like mother, like son. Do you see the resemblance? No. Northport police <laughs> think Brian Laundrie looks very much like his mom, Roberta. They're kind of built similarly. Northport. <laughs> they're kind of built similarly. Like what? No, they're not. Not at all. They're kind of built similarly. He's like, he's leaning into this. He's like, oh, guys, come on. Look at these two. They really do sort of look alike. PD spokesperson Josh Taylor told me police started tracking Brian after Gabby Petito's family reported her missing in New York. That was Saturday, September 11th. Police watched him leave in his Mustang Monday, September 13th and come back Wednesday, September 15th. All I'm going to say is I know where Brian's at. Chief Todd Garrison made that comment on Thursday, September 16th. I know where Brian Confident at. he knew Brian was inside his parents' home. That changed the next day, Friday, September 17th. When the family reported him on Friday, that was certainly news to us that they had not seen him. Uh, we thought that we'd seen Brian initially come back into that home on that Wednesday. But Chris and Roberta Laundry told investigators they hadn't seen their son since Tuesday. They later changed their statement to Monday. Was it just someone else that you saw? Uh, I believe it was it was his mom who was wearing a baseball cap. They had returned from the park with that Mustang. Mm. So who does that, right? Like, if you think your son's missing since Tuesday, you're going to bring his car back to the home. So it didn't make sense that any. Wait, so you saw the parents come back in the Mustang? I'm confused. So he saw it was only Roberta coming back in the Mustang, so therefore he thought that a, a elderly woman who's not nearly the same height stepping out of that car was Brian? Anyone would do that if he wasn't there. So the individual getting out with a baseball cap we thought was Brian. Taylor admits it was a costly mistake. Yeah. No case is perfect. <laughs> Cut him off there. <laughs> Now, we all know that Jesus. Brian Laundrie went to the Mayakahatchee Environmental Park on September 13th and likely never left again. And if you look behind me, you can see that the Laundrie's infamous red truck is missing from the driveway. The family's attorney tells me that his parents are currently grieving at an undisclosed location. Live in Northport, Erica Jackson, Wink News, now. So they did stamp, stamp in those no trespassing signs and everything Thanks. else. So Investigators wait, admit to making mistakes. Here we go. But I want to get to that shot because let, let's look. Here, here we go. Guys, they look the same, right? God, this player, your player sucks, wink. 
Like, you know, same body types, same height, you know, same baldness. You see a similarity there, right? You could totally, with that baseball cap on Roberta, I mean, look at all that. It's hiding all his hair. Clearly that person with hair getting out of the car who's, looks like a woman, you know, <laughs> clearly it's Brian. <laughs> oh my God, you can't, you can't write this shit. You can't write this shit. So anyway, yeah, Brian says Northport police has said officers thought they were Brian Lodger coming home in the Mustang on Wednesday, but it was actually his mom, Roberta. Taylor tells him because Roberta was wearing a baseball cap, they were confused, you know, because th that's how to throw the cops, guys. Just throw a base. That's why I wear those baseball caps. Always constantly confuse the police when you can. Uh, but because of that, they were confused and made a mistake. Taylor says this is why the police chief said on Thursday, September 16th, that he knew where Brian Laundry was when, in fact, he didn't. Uh, so they mistook. Here, here we go. Here's that. Look how look how much taller Brian is. When you can compare it, here he is with his dad. And then you compare like how short she is. What the hell? Plus, I'm sure she had the arm cast things she always wears. They look nothing alike. I'm sorry. But anyway, that's that's how they uh, that's how they messed this up. And then yeah, JB, what's up, JB? Uh, you can't you can't you can't write this jb can you jb's uh, acknowledging not only did, did they do this he, here's the full statement this identification misidentification did not have a big impact on costs and the investigation other than confusion it likely changed nothing <laughs> there is a very good possibility that brian was already deceased he still needed to be found taylor continued we just wanted people to better understand why we thought we knew brian was in his house it was a direct result of a lack of cooperation from the family early on in this investigation. <sighs> this damage control is a little sickening to me because this idea that, oh, it doesn't matter, he was dead, guys, so who cares if we screwed up and we wasted time and didn't talk about it more specifically, do, do it correctly. We thought he was in the house. What do you mean? You could have followed them better, for one, and and you're just going to blame the family, which, granted, they're an easy scapegoat to blame, right? Blame, blame the family for everything at this point. I get it. They're easy, easy targets. But my God, why weren't you following him earlier to the to the to the uh, park in the first place? Imagine if you'd followed him in reserve and you'd been able to stop him. And you would have known what happened and we would have saved all these questions and, and all these resources, money spent. It's just it's it's unfathomable that they couldn't do their jobs. And now the excuse is, well, guys, we may, you know, we make mistakes. It happens. We thought he was his mom. <laughs> I can't I can't believe that's literally like a real that's a real excuse he's going with. Yeah, you know, it's mistakes happen, and, uh, you know, we thought it was his mom, because, you know, they look, they look similar. Uh, so here's the laundry attorney uh, now also, as, as we do this live, I always get, thank you guys for sending this over. Uh, from the laundry attorney, I concur with Mr. Taylor that Brian may have already been deceased when NYPD realized that they lost track of him. However, you can't blame the family because the police didn't know enough to follow someone they were obviously surveilling. <laughs> So, look, Dirtalino is not always the, my favorite, but the, the, the fight between Dirtalino and Northport Police is pretty amazing and pretty classic because this literally just came in, by the way, because the laundry attorney is like, F you trying to blame the scapegoat, the family, because you were tracking him and you were supposed to be surveilling him and you weren't. And what about this tip that we saw him in Tampa? Did you see Roberta in Tampa? Is that what you saw here? Is that what it is? Hold on. I had a... Uh, I had another, uh, I lost it. There was a joke. It's a joke tweet. Where'd that my joke tweet go? <laughs> it's like, it's insane that they, uh, there's a lot. I mean, this is becoming a meme now. Uh, here it is. Sorry. I think Brittany, thank you for sending me nerdy addicts uh, joke. Here's Chris Laundry and his beloved son as they go shopping just one day before finding their missing mother, Roberta. There they are. There they are. Thank you, Brittany. Uh, we found them. Call off the search. We got eyes on them. They look nothing alike. Body type, hair. There's just nothing close. This is all, it's, again, and this all just makes me think there's more to this story than they're going to admit. Uh, it, it's crazy. It's crazy uh, because... Something, something's going on. And now everyone's just trying to throw each other under the bus because everyone wants answers. And, we're, and the only people who can give us answers are the laundries. They, they could have been honest from day one, but they're not being, which is really frustrating. And if they had been, 
we would might you know we might actually believe them and things would be a lot better off but because they refuse to do that we're still stuck where we're at uh, so I, I, see, I see a lot of people sending more comments. I'm going to get to you guys. Uh, there's a lot more stories. This is the main one. I want to watch this one footage. Here's here's a, We're going to get to more stuff. Everyone's like, what's going on? This is the breaking news right now, honestly, watching it. JB, everyone's re reporting on this fact that they screwed up. And now the lawyer and everybody, is sort of, they're all fighting this morning, as, as literally while we're live. They're all fighting with these comments. Uh, but that's the... Uh, that's the, that's the reality. So here's here's a longer form interview, and he's so slow. I'm going to speed it up again. If you don't like that I speed it up, you guys can slow me down. That's the beauty of this. So slow me down, and you'll be able to watch a little faster. Let's see if we can handle uh, Josh Taylor, who talks like this so much. Let's see if we can handle him a little the faster. Thirty-four days has been nice for you and the department. Is it only thirty-four days? It is. Um, it's uh, it's been intense. I mean, there's no question about it. You know, we work a lot of cases, a lot of tragedies, unfortunately. But the microscope is definitely on you in a situation like this. Boo-hoo. The microscope's on the police for doing their job. Oh, it must be so tough, my man. So sorry. And I've thought about that question a lot. And really, at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's not about what it's like on us, really. It's about, Thank you. Uh, trying to get answers. It's about uh, really fighting for Gabby, fighting to uh, get answers for her family and, and make sure that uh, the person potentially responsible for her death is, is held accountable. Um, what was it like Facts. for you guys working in conjunction with Gabby's family and, and you know, trying to help them throughout this time? Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, there's a, there's a lot of people involved here, a lot of players, a lot of agencies. Uh, I don't know why it's so, so I don't soft. Know that we've necessarily been the point people for them, uh, but certainly having spent some time uh, with Gabby's uh, dad and stepmom here early on in this, uh, for me anyways, that conversation played over and over again and, and really drove me and I'm assuming all of our other officers to uh, keep pressing on. I mean, it, it has been a... Uh, it's been an odd case. There's been a lot of just difficulties with it that I say is, is unlike a lot of cases we work. Have, I was just going to say, have you guys ever seen a case that's like this or a case of this magnitude here in North Carolina? I'll tell you this. Uh, rarely are cases similar. I always think, oh, this Oh, one, you're not nation, like, worldwide news, Josh? No shit. Be like, there's always something different. Uh, very rarely um, can you even correlate cases. There's always little nuances and stuff. So, uh, yeah, there's no doubt there's no other case uh, probably like this in the, in the world. Uh, and sorry for the audio. And I don't know why Tampa Bay uploaded it so soft. I have it boosted on everything I have, so apologies. But yeah, they, I, I, it's so, so soft. Sorry, that's not me. Um, the search. When you guys first started, it was not easy for officers by any means. What did they go through? Can, when? What search? Which well, part? Search for, well, you know, I know that you guys weren't searching for Gabby because we knew that she wasn't here, but searching we for We were, because, you know, remember, when this initially got kicked off, we didn't know what we had. We didn't know Gabby and Brian weren't people that we were ever even familiar with. Um, they were... They had moved here at some point in 2019. We had no previous interactions with them. What we know now is that they actually moved to New York in June. So we had people reporting a potential missing person from 2,000 plus miles away. We have this individual who's here with her car. We knew that. Um, and the family refused to cooperate with just basic questions on how are you here? Where is she? Uh, so that made things you know, very difficult. Um, so this is, sorry, there's an ant crawling over here. Um, so we certainly didn't rule out initially that she couldn't be here so we had that element um, and that was kind of the focus you know we're trying to get information from Brian they evoke their their rights not to speak okay is Gabby so we're focusing on trying to find Gabby um, Brian was free uh, to do whatever he wanted to do it was certainly suspicious uh, we certainly had uh, surveillance techniques being uh, implemented within hours of our initial interaction uh, you know but we lost him because we thought he was his mom uh, and thank you, John Hubbard's been watching our detective. He's he's te who's from Pinellas County, not too far. Uh, how many of these? How many of them are going to resign? I can't see how any of that department has any credibility left to do anything. They should have had uh, they should have had anyone and everyone in that laundry residence under surveillance, both those coming and going. Facts, Mr. Hubbard. Thank you for that uh, quote because he's spot on. How how, how th this damage control they're doing of trying to save the job and save face of the whole depart department where it's like well no someone's got to pay for this because you guys messed up uh well it didn't matter that we were following because he was probably dead that's literally the logic now that's why you're not admitting it well he's dead so it didn't matter that we lost him <laughs> like serious like that's that's his logic how about you should have figured out how to better watch him instead of come up with well it doesn't matter that we did well lost him we're human we make mistakes so that's the first search and then you know if we're going to the search in the, in the Carlton. It's uh, fast. It's all over the place. I mean, you know, usually you start out a little bit. We knew that the car had been there uh, in the park. So 
So you would walk where the entrance is, where the laundry in theory went to, so they could at least not make it so easy for them. You'd think you'd start at the, the beginning, walk through with your dogs and stuff, and, you know, maybe within 30, 45 minutes, find what they found, that two elderly people found with your whole resources and technical stuff and dogs. They couldn't have gone through the opening of the park where the, where the car was, where it was clearly the last seen place of him, the most obvious first place to start. Oh, it was underwater. All right, cool. Well, when it wasn't underwater, why were they there and you weren't there? Like, I'm so sick of his excuses. Well, you know, we tried, you know, it's good. We're just human. It's a vast place. Florida's really big, you know. What are we supposed to do? We follow, we use all our resources, you know, we found them. You do it do. You have a starting point. And then, you know, certainly the closer to that would be more likely. Uh, but a lot of that area uh, where he was eventually found was searched but with airboats. So that gives you an idea of the type of conditions that were there. It wasn't until just the last week, maybe week and a half, that some of that area dried out. And, you know, that's why the park was open. Uh, and that's why the family knew that that park was open. So that's why they wanted to go out and search. Uh, so you had time in the beginning when it happened and you had time when it opened to go there first. If that was really such a big problem. I don't buy it. I don't buy it. A lot of coincidences. I get it. it. Looks odd. Everything about this case has been on. Yeah. No. Duh. And so you're out there doing damage control because everything looks odd. Um, when it comes to you know continuing to search the park for that long, because what evidence did you guys have to keep pointing you in that direction? Good question. Resources there. Well, we look. Is, you know, we had multiple agencies, probably more than two dozen agencies, with all of their tools. Their bloodhounds, cadaver dogs, airboats, by air, drones. I mean, you name it. Helicopters with heat uh, sensing technology. Uh, it just you know, you kind of, after you've searched a lot of these areas that aren't underwater, you start going, well, we need to kind of search the water. And certainly that was on the table throughout, but it starts becoming more probable. And then with a lack of, but well, you don't know for 100%. And then there's a complete lack of any other credible information anywhere else. You just keep looking in the one place you got. Once the FBI came in to assist and kind of take over things, what did that change for you guys? Jeez Louise. Uh, okay. Jeez Louise. Uh, so the FBI's been involved from the beginning. In fact, uh, even the bugs hate Josh Taylor. <laughs> She was initially reported missing uh, in Suffolk County, New York. Uh, so that's where we were an assisting agency until about Tuesday, which we now know was after he was more than likely probably deceased in the woods. So the FBI in New York was a part of that conversation with the Suffolk County folks when there became some potential for evidence and Brian being down here, now we're working with FBI Tampa. Then we start looking around out west, now we're working with FBI Denver. Uh, so uh, we're all trying to do our part as a team to get things going, but uh, a lot of cooks in the kitchen, no doubt. What was communication between you guys like? And, you know, I mean, wh what did you learn throughout this? So I think the communication was pretty good. You know, it, it's never easy when you have multiple agencies. You've got New York, you know, what do you want us to do? Uh, enact that. And again, um, we don't know what we have at the time. So there is a lot of trying to figure out what's going on, what to do. Uh, so that's, that's very obvious. Um, I don't know what we would change. Um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of things that people Monday morning quarterback about this. You don't know what you would change. You're not going to just flat out admit, yeah, we should have tracked Brian better. Literally all of this would be solved and you guys would be heroes if you didn't lose Brian. It's literally the only regret you should have. Yeah, we screwed up and we should have better tracked Brian. We, had, we, 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 we did mess up there. He, does, he can't admit that, I imagine, because then he's a, the, the whole department's you know, admitting fault. But my God, yeah, that the, real, the honest answer is you should have followed him better. You didn't. Like, what the hell is this guy? <laughs> how, how do you not have that regret, guys? I'm sure you in the chat, you can send some other regrets. What other regrets should Josh Taylor of Northport have? I imagine there's many, but, you know, he, he's, he's, you know, you do it, live and you learn, you know? We had airboats, you know? We had some drones. We put a lot of stuff out there, and, uh, you know, I'm human. Sometimes you mess up, but, uh, you know, it's Brian and his mom, they have similar builds, you know, when they both wear hats. It's pretty easy to confuse the two. So, you know, sometimes as police, you know, it's a lot of pressure, you know, it's a, it's a vast place, Florida. And so, you know, a lot of people in hats and a lot of people with similar builds. And, you know, sometimes we just mess up. But, you know, I have no regrets, you know, because I don't know how to do my job. And, uh, I, you know, you know, it is what it is, you know. Uh, but a lot of that's with revisionist history of information that was learned later. Looking back, why didn't you do this then? Well, we didn't have that information at the time. Uh, so, I mean, I think you learn from everything. Certainly no investigation is 100 percent perfect. Could have done different things. Um, so I, I certainly think that there are lessons to, to learn. We know so no lessons to learn, but then at the end, say, safe answer. Well, yeah, of course, there's always lessons to learn, but I'm not going to tell you what.
because I don't want to lose my job. Obviously, the skeletal human remains are Brian's now. What did North Ford officers find that day? So, well, we found all of that evidence that day. Uh, so no, you didn't. They did. The parents did. You know, to, to paint a picture for you, um, you know, there's there's a lot of bones. There's some physical evidence, uh, and you know, they're they're scattered about. We're talking uh, animals, the water, the flow of water, the flowing away of things, uh, and Mother Nature doing its uh, you know best in that situation. Uh, Mother Nature doing its best. Doing its best what? Uh, so certainly. Everything that's been found was really kind of uh, the main stuff was, was found, and then you start spreading out. Like, okay, let's keep walking around, get the cadaver dogs, see if they smell stuff over there. Uh, I don't know if I answered your question. But. Location wise, from like the entrance of the park, where would you say that that was? I mean, from putting myself in Brian's shoes, it's probably about a 40 minute walk out into uh, the Carlton uh, from the footbridge that enters there from the Mayaka No Notebook and backpack. Obviously, we're also found. Are those salvageable, and will those help with the investigation? I think I'm, I'm hopeful. Uh, certainly, the backpack. Um, you know, I'm not unaware of what contents are in there. Uh, the notebook was wet. Uh, there'll be a process of drying that out in the, the most fragile way uh, to ensure that any information that's in there can be gathered. Uh, certainly, you know, drying it out, and you know, just want to open it and start going through it. So, I think there's a process of doing that, and that uh, I'm hopeful that there'll be a lot of information in there. Um, so that's interesting. I, I've heard that too, but. Uh... We'll see. That's a fascinating process to know you can dry it out. But the backpack, I, I'm shocked they didn't open the backpack there. He's saying they don't know what's in the backpack. Do you buy that? I mean, they just find a backpack and then just hand it over to somebody and then the, no one on the Northport police gets to know what's in the backpack or just him? I, it's confusing. Brian, obviously we know, is not here. Does that complicate the investigation into what happened to Gabby? Uh, of course. Does it complicate it more? Probably. But I think that uh, we will get the answers here. Uh, I think that we live in a society now where there's such a digital footprint and certainly there's been a lot of evidence gathered that's not been released and it wouldn't be appropriate to release at this time, uh, which I think will help uh, paint a picture there. North Port PD's role in the investigation moving forward. What does that look like? We'll be assisting the FBI with anything that they need. Uh, you know, if they feel like they need to go back out uh, to the preserve for any way, we can assist in that. If they need any assistance with the laundry family, we can certainly provide that. Okay. At the beginning, I know that the timeline was a little iffy. We were getting a lot of different information and you yourself were kind of questioning the information that you were getting from the laundry family. What do you think about all of that now? and the info that you guys were getting. From honestly. the laundry family? Yes. You know, can you be more specific on, like... Um, well, you know, okay, so back around when Chief said, you know, yes, we know where he is, we know that he's home, and then a few days later, it's all of a sudden, mm -hmm. actually, we haven't seen Brian. Brian went hiking, yeah. and he didn't come home. That was when you were like, you know, I don't really know what to believe. Yeah. Where does your mind go now, thinking back to all of that moment? Well, I think any time you begin an investigation with, we're not talking to you. <laughs> you know, uh, I think there was probably a lot of information at that point. Uh, certainly, we believe Brian was at the home on that day. It, if Brian shares some of that information, maybe you can get him help or, you know, f start figuring some of those things out. So you start off with a relationship of these people aren't cooperating. They obviously hadn't heard from Brian. And I believe that, that uh, there's a reason why I think they started, well, let's go out and search. Let's uh, do some of these things. So, yeah, I, I think it grew. What's the most interesting thing there, and sorry, I know the audio is low, but this is the, I can't boost it any further. I've boosted Tampa Bay, Fox 10 or whatever this is. This has it low. Um, What's interesting, though, is you got to remember what he just said. The one thing I will admit, Berlino, the Laundries, never spoke or tried to help. They never did. And so no matter what Dirtolino wants to say and in his defense of everything, which he's he's out there playing defense, again, I concur with Mr. Taylor. Uh, Brian may have already been deceased when they realized they lost track of him. However, you can't blame the family because the police didn't know enough to follow someone they were obviously surveilling. He's got him there, but at the same time, Laundry, D -D 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 Dirtolino, you guys didn't talk. So that's why you look guilty, and that's why you probably are guilty. So you can go and play, uh, you know, the defense all you want here. The fact is, Josh is always going to have you on that of, why didn't you talk to us? What were you afraid to tell us? We were trying to find Gabby, and then we were trying to, then you wanted us to find Brian, but why should we help you find Brian when you didn't even want to help find Gabby, which clearly these were connected more so than you were admitting. So if, it's on you. If you had come forward and told us day one, or hell, if you had come forward and spoken to your son and said, son, something's up, I can tell whether they knew or not. You're not going hiking right now. Where's Gabby? Where is she? Why is she missing? Like, hello? So much could have been done. And honestly, I think that's ultimately ju the judgment that they're going to get. You know, everyone wants justice for Gabby. Guys, the justice for Gabby is that the parents lost their own son in trying to like keep the lives going together. Uh, that's, that's the worst punishment you can give to a, to people, to parents. I'd rather go to jail than lose my son. 
Honestly, I'd rather die than lose my son. There's no greater justice to get the laundries than their son dying. And, I, and honestly, I don't even know if that's if that's even worth it. I don't. I don't. I didn't, you know what I mean? Like some people will say, "Yeah, burn." You know, others won't. But it's, it's the reality is there's no other ju justice to the laundries than them losing their son. Jail, trials, none of that shit would have compared to losing one of your children. Come on, guys, you know this. So we can get mad all day if you want, but they're they're suffering like crazy. They're paying a price. Um, and honestly, as we go through it and we're hearing Josh Taylor, I, I, I had to agree with him. It's like, at the end of the day, Josh Taylor's right. They weren't helpful. So if they wanted Brian found, which I think they did at one point, if this is all true, uh, if they wanted him found, they would have spoken up in the beginning to the FBI, the cops, to Brian, to try and like get him help and figure out what do we do? Hire a better lawyer if you really had a criminal case going, you know? And that, that's where things really, I think, ultimately failed. And they say that they want to go out and search. Did North Fork police officers have to be with them? Not necessarily. Um, I think the first time that Chris uh, Laundry came out, we, basically two weeks prior to, they did need to be with the North Fork Police Department. It was, it was closed. We were still actively out there on the ground. When they heard that uh, the park was going to reopen. They wanted to go. Uh, it's free and open to the public. Uh, we just weren't going to let that happen. Um, when they find, you know, the remains and the backpack and everything, what's their reaction then? So I'm not entirely clear. It's my understanding that uh, Mr. Laundry found uh, like a dry bag type of deal. So you got a dry bag separate from the backpack. Uh, he finds this, this dry bag. Our officers were, I guess, not right in visual sight of him. You know, at times they were walking together. At times they were uh, kind of with what I would consider within earshot. Uh, and in this particular case, he, he finds something, he goes over, he tries to make contact with the officer. They eventually come together. Uh, the officer says, oh, that, that is interesting. Um, our officers begin looking that area a little bit more. They find the backpack and other remains. The family does not see that. They take a picture of the backpack. The family's now over here somewhere. They show him the picture. Does this look like Brian's backpack? It's my understanding that they confirm though that does look like Brian's backpack. Uh, they want to come look at everything else that's been found and we tell them no and that they, they need to leave. Um, what has this been like for the city? Oh, boy. No. no. Um, what has it been like for the city? Hmm. It's probably been very hard. I mean, there are a lot of people that are prideful of Northport. People have lived here their entire lives. Um, there's definitely been this, it's a negative situation to begin with. You have the death. Why is it negative, though, Josh? Let's be honest. It's not because there was a murder. It's because of your ineptitude. And you're going to gloss over that and talk about other things. I, don't even, I, I didn't get this far yet, but uh, dude, the Northport police are a joke right now. You guys are a punchline. And someone needs to step up and take accountability for that. And you're not doing it, my man. Death of a young lady. You have a potential murder on the loose. Uh, the mystery surrounding that. There's nothing positive to come from any of that. Certainly the questions with how things have been handled and the timelines and some of that, you add that into the mix, um, it's heavy. Uh, there's a lot of pressure. Uh, people want answers from around the world. Uh, so, I mean, it's been a lot. I think that there is uh, some relief that, you know, the, the potential of the light at the end of the tunnel here, uh, you know, let's say- That it's over. I think he's like, there's a light at the end of the tunnel here because finally we can move on. Hopefully you guys stop bragging me <laughs> and I can just go by and not get in any trouble. I hope, please, let me skate by so I keep my job. I don't like people losing their jobs necessarily, but I don't know if it was Josh's fault. Like, he's the spokesman for it, you know? He, who's, who is the detective in charge of following, of following Brian? It wasn't Josh Taylor, let's be honest. I'm giving Josh trouble because he's the face of the, of the Northport PD. That's his job. He's like the marketing PR guy. Uh, is he an officer? It's unclear to me, but at the end of the day, I don't know if it's actually his fault, to be fair. But someone should be. There needs to be someone who's who's kept in a loop of how'd you f this up? How did so many officers and depart department heads and those department heads don't want to admit failure? They're gonna blame some little guys. But it's really the higher ups. Josh is higher up. It's the higher ups who really failed here at Northport, and he's he can't say that even though he should. What we need to say and uh, continue to work the case and get as many facts as possible uh, for the public's appetite and, and obviously more importantly for Gabby's family, uh, so that we can uh, try to move on. For those people that say, because you mentioned, you know, the speculation going back and forth, for those people that say, oh, they should have taken Brian in right away, they should have never let him get away, what do you say to that? Well, generally speaking, I'll say that we did everything within the law with all of the intentions of finding answers. Um, you know, 
We didn't know if we had a crime. We knew a crime didn't exist here, or we didn't think that a crime existed here in North. He did just say that there was a murderer on the loose, and some other people in the comments I saw caught that. He did say there was a murderer on the loose, implying, well, I guess we knew she was murdered, and it's not implying Brian did it. It sort of is. It seems like it is. Uh, we don't know what we had. Uh, we now know that despite probably all of that, that criticism, you know, if we would have showed up, if Brian would have personally invoked his rights there, there's nothing we can do. We couldn't have taken him into custody. We didn't have anything to do that. Uh, odds are, the way that it turned out probably still would have turned out that way. You know, odds are he would have walked out there if he wanted to on a Monday and done what he was intending to do. Did you, so did you guys make contact with him or was it just with his parents? Or just his parents, okay. just his parents. Okay. Um, last question. You guys as officers see everything, right? More than the average person would see. How will this stick with all of you? As far as, which part? Um, the case and just, you know, yeah. going through this whole process. Well, I might lose my job. Uh, a lot of people think I'm a dunce. Uh, yeah, and I really just don't know what I'm doing in my job. And I'm kind of a punchline here now in the rest of the world. And uh, kind of sucks. Even the bugs keep me. They keep biting me. And uh, But, you know, I'm human. And uh, it is what it is. And uh, we make mistakes. And uh, you live and learn. You know? Could I have done things differently? I think I did everything right. But, you know, I guess I could have done things differently. You know? I'm going to answer both ways. Just because. That's what I can do. I'm Josh Taylor. You know, it, again, it, it's been a, uh, an odd case. It's been a heavy case. Uh, the amount of uh, eyeballs on it is, frankly, amazing. You know, I think, I think you learn something from, from everything. Um, there's nothing that, that people here did wrong. You know, there's nothing. Uh, if, if you would have been in the, the war room uh, with the amount of people and resources we were utilizing, you saw the searches. You saw how much things were out there. I mean, uh, nothing's going to be perfect, but um, all of the intent uh, was appropriate. You know, um, I'm good with it. You know, there's, there's going to be mistakes, but um, I, I think we're, we're okay with uh, our actions. Well, there you go. They're okay with their actions. Josh Taylor is okay with his actions. Are you okay with their actions? I, I'd like to see, as as Detective Hubbard said, I would like a couple heads to roll. <laughs> and then maybe not fired, but, you know, put in disciplinary pro prohibition. It was ever called, you know, something to admit failure. Because to not admit failure in this case from the Northport police is kind of a, laughable to me. They had the task of following him. They're admitting they followed him. And the reality is, well... We mistook Brian for Roberta. I mean, can you believe this shit? I, I, <laughs> it's, it's insane to me. <sighs> uh, I don't know how to do it. I see a lot of your comments coming. Let's go through. Uh, Mer Melina, Mel uh, rather, Melanie. Thank you, Melanie. Uh, I'll, I'll end with Melanie's and we'll read all the rest of you before I clip this. Melanie, this case is getting so ridiculous. You can clearly see there's a huge cover up going on. Police are trying hard to fool the public. But that's only my opinion watching from Ontario, Canada. Oh, beautiful place. Thank you for watching, Melanie. Everybody else who's commenting, I'm going to get to all your comments next. I do want to clip this sake for YouTube so you guys always get the the, the, the main chunk of the main headline. Uh, we still got lots more to go through. I'm going to take some calls. I'm going to get you guys more involved in this channel. Lots more to discuss here. So if you're watching live, don't go anywhere. If you're watching on the replay, make sure you at least hit the subscribe or the bell for all alerts. Hell, if you really want to help, hit that join. And that way you can always catch the full replay. Sorry, I missed. I, I thought I uploaded the yesterday's replay. It's up now. It should be in the members only. It's a day late, but now you have two to watch today. Uh, you can always catch the replays in the members only tab uh members only uh, or playlist on my main channel page on youtube go to popcornplanet.com and then scroll down to the members only playlist and you'll see the playlist they automatically upload there. best place to find them you can always catch the full replays of every stream right there so if you want to watch this one become a member go check it out watch it later thank you guys so much for watching here on popcorn planet live viewers don't go anywhere we're just getting started